Intel has just lost $100 billion zero cents in the span of 48 hours. And it didn't happen because of a market crash or some sudden catastrophic event. It happened because Beijing made a decisive move, a quiet one, but one with massive global implications. In a matter of days, Intel went from being the dominant leader in the semiconductor industry to a company deeply vulnerable in the global tech war. This all started on April 12, 2025, when China's Ministry of Industry and Information Technology issued a policy change that shook the very foundation of U.S. chip makers. The new directive was simple but devastating. Government agencies and state-backed enterprises were banned from purchasing chips made by U.S. manufacturers. That includes giants like Intel, AMD, and Micron. The official reason for this move? Digital sovereignty and the need to secure supply chains. But, in reality, this policy shift was aimed directly at dismantling a critical piece of America's tech dominance. Within hours of the announcement, contracts with major Chinese companies like China Mobile, State Grid, and even Huawei, COM, punk server vendors, were nullified. For Intel, this was catastrophic. In 2024, China accounted for almost 27% of Intel's revenue, roughly $22 billion, zero cents. When Beijing flipped the switch, Intel stock took a nosedive, plummeting by 18.3% by the close of trading on April 14th. It wasn't just a reaction to the lost sales. It was the beginning of what traders saw as a broader strategic move by China to completely phase out U.S. semiconductor supplies. But here's the real question. Is this just about semiconductors, or is it about something much bigger? What if the target wasn't just Intel, it was U.S. innovation itself? On the surface, China's move might appear defensive, but if you look at the structure of it, there's something much more calculated going on. This isn't just decoupling, it's a deliberate erosion of a key part of American tech dominance, and it's happening with surgical precision. Intel's business model made it an especially easy target, for years, Intel relied heavily on sales of PC and server processors, products tied to Chinese enterprise and telecom firms. In contrast, companies like NVIDIA, with more diversified partnerships across the globe, were in a stronger position. They weren't nearly as dependent on the Chinese market as Intel was. By pulling this thread, China didn't just punish Intel, it created major internal disruption inside Silicon Valley, hitting at the heart of America's most essential tech corridors. The ripple effect was significant. Intel's fall dragged down other semiconductor ETFs, like SOX and SMH, causing a 4.2% drop in the PHLX Semiconductor Index. And yet, it was Intel that bore the brunt of this blow. That's because Intel had remained too attached to the Chinese market. When you zoom out, you see that Intel's decline didn't happen overnight. It's the result of years of compounded failures both in execution and strategy. Back in 2011, Intel controlled 80% of the global PC processor market. But by the fourth quarter of 2024, that share had dropped to just 57%. This wasn't a fluke. It's the outcome of a series of missteps. Intel's delays in transitioning to newer manufacturing processes, like the 10NM and 7NM chips, gave competitors like AMD an opportunity to grab market share. On top of that, Intel failed to adapt to the growing trend of custom chips from companies like Apple and Amazon. In 2023, Intel posted a $2,800,000,000 net loss in one quarter and laid off thousands of employees. By the time China made its move in 2025, Intel had lost its pricing power, its dominance, and most crucially, its strategic insulation. As semiconductor policy researcher Doug O'Neill pointed out, Intel's business model still relied on a globalization framework that has now been shut down by China. But here's the thing. This isn't just about Intel's failure to adapt. It's also about something China has been quietly working on for years. There's a looming deadline that makes Beijing's latest policy shift look less like a reaction and more like the beginning of a clock ticking down to something much Big. According to documents obtained by Reuters, China's government has set a target to eliminate all U.S. source semiconductors from public infrastructure, energy systems, and telecom equipment by December 2027. This isn't just a short-term play, it's a long-term strategic shift. By 2026, 80% of all central government computing systems in China must run on domestically designed chips. For U.S. chip makers like Intel, this is not just a loss of market access. It's the forced obsolescence of their products within China, 
the world's second largest tech market. Morgan Stanley estimates that this policy could strip $350 billion, zero cents, in cumulative revenue from U.S. chipmakers by the end of 2027. And the stakes go beyond just revenue loss. If China succeeds in replacing U.S. chips with domestic alternatives, it would prove that the global chip supply chain can thrive without U.S. tech. That sets a dangerous precedent for other nations, Brazil, Indonesia, parts of Europe, that might follow China's lead. What Beijing is doing isn't just about blocking U.S. companies. It's about creating a fully self-sufficient, post-American tech ecosystem. And they're not stopping there. The real shock came in September 2024, when a report from Tech Insight revealed that Huawei had launched its Mate 70 Pro smartphone, powered by a 5nm Curin chip. This chip was produced domestically, using older DUV deep ultraviolet lithography machines, but with multi-patterning techniques that were previously thought too inefficient to create chips smaller than 7nm. This shattered the belief that China couldn't advance beyond 14nm without ASML's EUV tools. And the reality? Huawei's chip worked, and it worked well. Within six months, Huawei shipped over 45 million Mod A70 Pro devices. This wasn't just symbolic. It proved that China's domestic semiconductor ecosystem was maturing at an astonishing pace. Meanwhile, Intel was still struggling with production delays in its Ohio fab, and its 18A node, its next big leap in chip technology, wasn't expected to reach mass production until mid-2026. China's bet wasn't on bottlenecking U.S. tech. It was on scaling what they already had. And they won. With Huawei's chip ecosystem now functioning independently, the biggest barrier to replacing Intel in China isn't technical, it's time. And it's not just about smartphones. By 2025, over 75% of China's strategic sectors like aerospace, power grids, and telecom have already begun transitioning to domestic semiconductor suppliers. Huawei, SMIC, and other Chinese companies are now receiving upwards of $58 billion zero cents annually in state support. Meanwhile, U.S. firms like Intel are being systematically excluded from procurement chains. The U.S. share of Chinese chip imports fell from 41% in 2021 to just 28% in 2024. Domestic Chinese alternatives now capture over 55% of government computing contracts. The question is no longer whether China can replace U.S. firms. It's about how soon they stop needing them altogether. Now, you might be asking, can Intel respond to this? The government has rolled out a $52 billion, $700 million zero-cent support package with the Chips and Science Act. Intel stands to receive a hefty chunk of this, around $8 billion, $500 million, zero cents in grants, and $11 billion, zero cents in loans. Um, but despite the funding, Intel's Ohio Megafab isn't expected to begin partial operations until late 2026, nearly a year behind schedule. Meanwhile, TSMC is on track to begin 3M production in Arizona by Q3 2025. Intel's $8 billion, $200 million, zero cents deal with AWS may cushion the blow for now, but analysts are skeptical. JP Morgan recently projected that Intel could lose up to $13 billion, $700 million, zero cents in annual revenue from China by 2027. And while government support can stabilize Intel in the short term, it can't reverse the company's loss of technological relevance. Intel's competitors, like Samsung and TSMC, are already at 3M and moving ahead with 2M prototypes. Intel's 18A chip, it's not expected to hit the market until mid-2026. And here's the kicker, this isn't just about chips. Intel's struggles are a microcosm of something much bigger happening across global tech. China isn't just targeting one company, it's redefining who gets to participate in the future of the global tech race. And if you think this is merely a dispute over chips, you're missing the larger picture. China's next move will likely involve a full-scale export ban on critical materials like gallium, rare earths, and AI training chips. The U.S. is preparing a response, but it may already be too late. The deeper question at play here is this. Can the country that invented the semiconductor industry survive its own dependency on foreign supply chains? And while all of this plays out, it's not just the companies who will feel the effects. The U.S. consumer will, too. Price hikes are coming.
from laptops to cloud hosting, enterprise servers to AI systems, costs will rise. This isn't an abstract issue, it's a real one. A real issue that's going to show up on your next bill. So, where does Intel go from here? Can they recover, or is this just the first stage in a long decline? One thing's for sure, the future of global tech is being reshaped right now. And the question is, whether America will be able to remain a key player in it.